Live from WSLS, this is 10 News at 6, working for you. Now at 6, future COVID-19 changes. I'm not anti-mask, I'm not anti-vaccine. In fact, I support both. But I do believe these are decisions that people should make on their own. The plans the governor-elect laid out while visiting Southwest Virginia. Plus, a guilty plea from the man who set a local landmark on fire, the new law that could impact his fate. And Illuminites returns to Explore Park. We are live right now to show you the new displays that you'll find this weekend at the holiday event. Good evening and thanks for joining us. I'm Brittany McGraw. John Carlin has the night off. Today, Virginia's next governor made his first appearance in Southwest Virginia since the election. 10 News reporter Annie Schroeder joins us tonight after speaking with Glenn Youngkin. And you all had a had a chance to talk about several policies that could impact people in our region. Yeah, Brittany, lots of ground to cover. Possibly the biggest change that we'll see here in Virginia under Youngkin's administration will be certain COVID-19 protocols we have in place right now. He plans to reverse some of them once he takes office in January. Governor-elect Glenn Youngkin is back in Southwest Virginia and doubling down on promises made on the campaign trail. And I just look forward to going to work for Southwest Virginia. I think Southwest Virginia sometimes gets forgotten about. And uh, I have made promises that I will not forget about Southwest Virginia, and I keep my promises. Youngkin held the thank you rally at Community Church in Salem Friday afternoon. 10 News had the chance to speak with Youngkin directly about his transition process with the Northam administration. Working with people from across the aisle and kind of working with the Northam administration, I mean, what's that been like for you over the last It's been years? great. And I have to say that Governor Northam has been very, 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 very accommodating and respectful, and I just so deeply appreciate that. During his speech Friday, Youngkin outlined several plans to change the state's vaccine rollout, which he feels went poorly. We can do so much better is make the vaccine available and help Virginians make the decision around the vaccine. I've gotten the vaccine, my family has gotten the vaccine, and I'm a big advocate for the vaccine. The biggest change will be for state employees and children in schools. The governor-elect says he will go back on several decisions made by the Northam administration once in office. Parents know what's best for their children when it comes to vaccines and masks. And so, therefore, the two big, uh, the, the two big statewide mandates that are out there, which is with government employees, um, I will rescind and I will, I will appoint a new health, a new health lead um, who will rescind our mandate that kids in K-12 through have to wear a mask to school every day. Now, Youngkin says he also looks forward to the chance to strengthen Virginia's workforce and help the economy recover after the pandemic. He has several other stops across the state over the weekend. Thanks so much, Annie. The governor-elect is now in Lynchburg, where he visited E.C. Glass High School ahead of another thank you rally at Thomas Road Baptist Church in 30 minutes. We'll share what happened during those events coming up tonight on 10 News at 11. A teenager who opened fire killing two people in Kenosha, Wisconsin last summer is now free tonight. After three days of deliberations, a jury found Kyle Rittenhouse not guilty on all charges. The defense claimed he only pulled the trigger in self-defense after he was attacked during protests following the police shooting of Jacob Blake. He wishes none of this would have ever happened. But as he said when he testified, he did not start this. And we're thankful in more ways than one. Meanwhile, the Virginia NAACP calls today a travesty of the American justice system, adding that there's even more skepticism since it was a predominantly white jury. No matter how anyone feels about the verdict today, what we all should be is concerned because many of us know that if a black man were on trial and had that same situation, a black 17-year-old would not have received the same treatment that Regan House had. The National Guard remains on standby near the courthouse. A former student pled guilty to setting the old Bedford Middle School on fire. This is some video from when that fire happened. 10 News reporter Tim Harfman was in the courtroom as attorneys explained why Daniel Flint needs a medical exception with his sentencing. 
Daniel Flint appeared in a Bedford courtroom Friday, facing two felony charges for burglary and arson in connection with the incident in January 2020. His attorney asked the court to consider Flint's autism diagnosis in both his plea and sentencing. A recent law passed by the General Assembly allows mental health to be considered when it comes to pleas and sentencing. Bedford Commonwealth attorney Wes Nance says he does not support the request because of Flint's criminal background. We anticipate requesting a conviction and an appropriate sentence. Uh, I know that the court will take his autism diagnosis into consideration, as the court should. But Mr. Flint has already been before Judge Upback before on very serious matters. Flint's next court appearance is scheduled for March 1st of next year. In Bedford, Tim Harfman, 10 News, working for you. COVID-19 booster shots will soon be available for all adults. Both the FDA and the CDC advisory committees approved a third dose of Pfizer and Moderna to those 18 and older. Health experts say this is critical in protecting people over the holidays, which is when we could see a rise in cases. The virus is not going to disappear overnight, and we've got to learn how to adapt our lives, and that includes getting a booster dose. Boosters will be available once the CDC director signs off on the recommendation. Local chapters of the American Red Cross are seeing critical shortages of type O blood. Organizers are encouraging people of all blood types to consider donating blood over the next few days to help fill the need ahead of the holidays. Fall is typically a time when the blood supply normally rebounds from a summer shortage. And now... The American Red Cross is experiencing the lowest amount of blood on the shelves that we've had in six years. Local Red Cross chapters will be hosting two blood drives in Roanoke next Wednesday and Friday. There will be small gifts for those who donate. You can soon take in the sights and sounds of the season at Illuminites. Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowitz is live at Explore Park's Winter Walk of Lights, which officially kicks off tomorrow. And Jeff, those who are headed out definitely will need to bundle up. Yeah, it's very cold outside tonight, and it's going to stay pretty chilly outside really all weekend long. And as you said, it's quiet outside here at Illuminites right now, but that will change by this time tomorrow. Of course, tomorrow night is opening night. I want to show you the satellite and radar composite, and you'll notice that things are very quiet, not only locally, but on the regional level as well. We're going to stay dry here as we head throughout the course of the overnight, and really going to stay quiet through much of the weekend as well. Temperatures, though, right now in the 30s and 40s, more 30s than anything else, with the coldest spots being the New River Valley and Mountain Empire. Overnight lows tonight will fall into the 20s for many of us. What we're tracking here, well, we're going to have another cold front swing through here as we head late Sunday, Sunday night into early Monday. Day. What that's going to do is not only provide us a chance for some rain showers, but it's also going to increase our winds again, and it's also going to pull in the coldest air of the season as we head into Tuesday of next week. Now, for many of us, the precipitation ends for us with this next cold front early on Monday. But for the West Slopes, we could have the chance for some flurries and or light snow showers as we head later Monday, even into Tuesday of next week. But again, uh, that will mainly be in elevations above 2,500 or 3,000 feet. Reporting here live at Explore Park here in Roanoke County, I'm Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowich. Back to you, Brittany. Understanding citizens, the easy way you can provide feedback on what's needed in the Star City. Plus, we are once again in your town, this time exploring Danville, the unique activity that's now being offered at a popular spot along the Dan River. New tonight, the city of Roanoke is looking for feedback. Next week, 500 people will be picked to complete a survey on what they think about city services like trash pickup, social services, street paving, and more. People will be picked by zip code to make sure that the answers are equitable. The idea is for city leaders to have an idea on what they're doing well or what could be improved. If you see on your phone uh, something show up and it says issues and answers, you uh, treat it as you've just been given a golden ticket because you've been selected to respond to this survey. The results of the survey, which is conducted every three years, will be presented to city council in January. We are once again in your town, and Danville has the perfect spot for you and your family to exercise your body and mind all at the same time. Take a reading outdoors at the Story Walk Trail.
The city's library teamed up with Parks and Rec to take part of the Riverwalk Park and feature a new children's picture book each month. The stories are spread out along 20 podiums around a 700-foot loop. We believe that uh, there should be a little bit of reading everywhere you go. Uh, so we just want to encourage people to get out, exercise their minds and their bodies, and spend a little time together. They've had three different stories for families to read so far, with even more to come. The city is also working to find more trails to turn into story walks. So yesterday, temperatures were in the 70s. Today, we fell into the 40s, and the chilly air is going to stick around for a little while longer. However, a warm-up is in view on the seven-day forecast. We'll let you know when highs could hit 60 or above again coming up. A holiday favorite is returning as Roanoke County is about to flip the switch on year three of Illuminites. The popular event starts at Explore Park tomorrow. There are 1,000 new lights and new displays featuring four different themes. This includes a giant bear for over the river and through the woods, zip liners from the outdoor adventure, sparkly ornaments from Christmas traditions, and magical unicorns from the fantasy area. A little bit of everything for everyone and some really cool lights displays. Each night when you're out here, it's really cool to see the smiling faces and the oohs and ahs from all the, from all the kids and all, uh, all the older kids as well. You can also shop for artisan crafts or you can roast marshmallows around the campfire. Tonight, Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowich is live ahead of tomorrow's kickoff. And Jeff, definitely a fun way to take in the sights and sounds of the season. And it's been pretty cool to see the different light displays that you've been showing off in your live shots. Yeah, Brittany, over 600,000 lights here at Illuminates. And I believe if I read this correctly, 100,000 new lights just being uh, debuted this year. Now, as far as the weather is concerned, it's very chilly outside right now, and it's going to stay chilly outside for opening night. I want to show you your forecast for Illuminites tomorrow evening. You're going to notice that temperatures are going to fall into the upper 30s by 7, eventually into the middle 30s by around 9 o'clock. Temperatures right now are in the 30s and 40s, with the coldest spots being in the NRV and also over towards the Mountain Empire. Overnight lows tonight, though, gonna fall into the 20s. Brr! Now, as far as Friday night football is concerned, we're looking at temperatures falling into the middle 30s by 9 or 9.30. You're definitely gonna wanna bundle up for those high school football games. Overall, though, you can leave the umbrella at home as we are bone dry outside. Told you overnight lows tonight in the 20s. Let's be a little more specific here. In the mountains, you're looking at lows 22 to 26. Outside the mountains, you're looking at lows 22 to 27. So really, it looks like we're going to be fairly uniform tonight. Everybody's in the 20s, maybe an outlying spot or two around 30 degrees. Well, I don't know about you, but tomorrow I know I'll be decorating outside of my house for Christmas. And if you're uh, going to be joining me at your home, it looks like we're going to have temperatures in the middle 40s by noon, upper 40s by around 3 o'clock. Overall, tomorrow we're chilly and we're not as windy outside. Again, the winds have calmed down throughout the day today. Still a little breezy up here at Explore Park, but certainly not as windy as it was outside this morning. Now for tomorrow, a little more cloud cover than what we had outside today, and we're staying chilly. Highs tomorrow in the mountains, 40s to near 50. Outside the mountains, upper 40s and low to mid 50s. Here's a look at that satellite and radar composite, and you'll notice, friends, that high pressure is ruling the roost for us right now and continue to do so here for us as we head really over the course of uh, about the next uh, 36 hours or so. That means for us a pretty quiet forecast on Saturday into most of the day Sunday. What we're tracking here, well, on Saturday, we're looking quiet. Sunday starts pretty quiet with some sun, but I think we're quickly going to turn pretty overcast as we end the weekend. That's all in advance of our next storm system, a cold front that's going to cross us Sunday night into Monday morning. And as that happens, it's certainly going to bring us a pretty good shot for some rain as we had Sunday night. Uh, I would say by the time midday rolls around on Monday, we should be for the most part dry. And then behind that cold front, we're going to have strong winds pushing in. Obviously, we're going to have a uh, reinforcing shot of cold air coming into play as well. And we could even have some flurries and or west slope snow showers ahead of Thanksgiving. Your extended forecast showing temperatures on Saturday, upper 40s. We're in the middle 50s on Sunday, so a little bit of a warm up for us here as we head into Sunday. And then the frigid air arrives. Coldest air of the season on Tuesday, 44, but it's short lived as temperatures by Thanksgiving and also into Black Friday hovering around that 60 degree mark. So overall, Brittany, 
We're going to get cold next week. We're going to get pretty chilly, obviously, this weekend, too. But the coldest air arrives early next week, but it's short-lived. By the time the holiday rolls around, by Thanksgiving Day, temperatures will be around 60 degrees. So we'll be trending in the right direction just in time for Thanksgiving and Black Friday. Back to you. All right. Thanks so much, Chief Meteorologist Jeff Hanowitz, live at Explore Park. Illuminite, which officially kicks off this weekend. Jeff, thanks so much. Appy, now we'll... All right, we'll complete our state volleyball trio of previews when we check in with the two-time defending champs, the Auburn Eagles, and the postseason rolls on tonight. First and ten, we hear from the state-bound North Cross Raiders. Sports is next. And now, the Freedom First Sports Desk with John Apicello. First and 10 is into the region semifinal round of the VHSL and the VISAA plays state title games tonight and tomorrow. And to nobody's surprise, the Raiders of North Cross will try and bring home the gold tonight. The Raiders have rolled through the season with a 10 and one record. Lone loss 17 14 to Ravenscroft. That was back in early September. Coach Steven Alexander's team has overcome the graduation of a couple of Division I linebackers from a season ago. And North Cross has gone on to outscore their opponents 441 to 76 on the season. But they are expecting a close contest tonight when they take on Atlantic Shores. Christian. That's in Virginia Beach tonight. The only thing closer than this game might be the group of guys wearing the North Cross unis tonight. This team is the deepest team we've had. Um, we may be lacking some of the um, top tier guys that we've had in the past, but uh, the, it's deep. It, it, it's a great group of young men that, that have come together. Um, they, they really support each other. Uh, we have a great weight room culture this year. We got great practice culture, and that um, that's a testament to the guys. They, they've done a really good job of being a cohesive group. Indeed, they have region semifinal matchups in the VHSL tonight, including some Class 4 wars. Look out for Louisa at Salem and Western Albemarle at GW Danville. How about Botetot at Seaburg, Glenver hosting Martinsville, Perry McClure and Giles. Two very proud programs with great histories going at it. A busy night tonight, first and 10, around 11.10 to 11.15. Don't worry, we'll be here. The state volleyball finals are Saturday in Salem, and a trio of area teams will play for state crowns, including Auburn, who's no stranger to this particular neighborhood. The Eagles looking for their third consecutive state title in Class 1. They're a perfect 29-0, and they're riding a 73-game win streak into the finals. Their last loss was early in the 2019 season. For the Eagles, it's about continuing the tradition of a special senior group that's known nothing but excellence year in and year out. I've been with this group of girls since we were in like seventh, eighth grade, and it just it's really awesome to see how all of us have like improved from since then, and we all, we all really want this really badly, so I'm excited. It's definitely humbling and really exciting that all of us get to do that because not a lot of people are well, they don't get to be in the position that, that we get to be in. So it's definitely really exciting and hopeful. Well, the Eagles have a noon match time Saturday. Salem Civic Center, they'll take on another regular in the state tournament, Riverheads, for the Class 1 VHSL state crown. Men's hoops tonight. Iona's at Liberty. Coppin State is at UVA. Some guy named Cam Newton's the Whoa. starter versus Washington. Go, Super Cam. Yes, Super Cam. And tonight on, uh, I should tell you, the Coastal Clash preview tonight on 1st and 10. We'll try to get that in at the end, the Cavaliers at the Panthers. Wait. There you go. I just want to keep talking about Cam. Cam. However, the CDC just <laughs> endorsed COVID-19 booster shots for all adults. NBC Nightly News continues our coverage where Lester Holt is looking into whether we're going to need a fourth dose. That's coming up next.